people. So as a formal introduction, my name is Rachel Gomez Atri. I know it's a long name, but I work for the SBDC, that's the Small Business Development Center. And so what we do is we provide one-on-one -on -one business consulting and business advising um, at all stages of, you know, businesses, um, stage of, of their life cycle, right? And um, we work under the UNLV Office of Economic Development. So my background, um, oh, I should say the SBDC is funded by the SBA. So we're actually, um, it's your tax dollars at work when the government says we're going to invest in small business, this is how they do it. They put money into these small business development centers and we do outreach into the business community. And every SBD center is hosted by a university. So we have, I think, 52 around the country. And so here in Nevada, we have one tied to UNR, and then this one tied to UNLV, and then we also have um, like satellite offices with the different chambers and city, like city of North Las Vegas. My background is I've been a business owner um, for over 20 years. I have um, a staffing agency where I did um, job placements around the country in the consumer packaged goods industry. Um, I also, hi there, I also um, earlier in my career did tech support for computer associates, so that's a little bit of my, my tech background. Um, and then I also own a separate company, which is a, a technology company, kind of like a LinkedIn for the arts. Um, but then I consult, and I'm, uh, I work for the SBDC, but I love this industry, and hopefully I can shed some knowledge and share some of our resources with you guys. So who is the SBDC? You know, one of the great things here with Las Vegas that we were talking about, it's a great environment for small businesses. We are exploding. And so the government and the different agencies keep coming out with a lot of these uh, different, um, different um, centers and business groups to help support our business community. We like to think of the SBDC as your first call. So if you have an idea, if you are looking to get registered, if you're looking for funding, you know, especially for funding when you're in the growth mode and then looking at poss possibly hiring, now you've got compliance issues, um, you need to make sure you've got the proper registrations, the proper licensing, all of those things. So we help you navigate through that. Um, and then of course, um, on the other side, we help to make sure um, you have a, a good marketing strategy in place. If you have a product, what is your um, go-to-market strategy? And we, we help with, with that entire process for you. Um, and again, it is at no cost to you because it's funded by your federal tax dollars. So what are your biggest challenges as an entrepreneur? Um, can I just kind of ask, like, what stage are you at with your companies or with your ideas? And what's kind of challenges you're facing? Which, which one to go with first? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, do you have multiple ideas? And multiple ideas. Multiple ideas. Which one to go to I first? I have the Vegas Inventors Group here. Oh, wow. And uh, we talk IT and get free classes on it. But most of us have so many different ideas that you focus on one or you focus on five or spend two days on one and two days on that's sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, and you know, and that's hard to say because, again, you, you pursue these things because you have a passion for it, right? Your brain just is wired in that way, but where do you take it next? Which is the most feasible? Which is the most logical, most reasonable? What do you have for your resources? What resources are available to you? So any other challenges? Uh-huh. Okay. So I'm the only employee in the US. We do not have a huge marketing budget. So they just send me here to you know, explore the market and find the first uh, players. Sure. But our biggest challenge is like having some inbound traction. Sure. Uh, because we definitely don't have a lot of money to invest in marketing. So I have to do everything by myself. <laughs> you know, uh, of course. Outreach, things like that. And uh, like, I'm losing a lot of time by reaching out to people. My biggest challenge is to have people coming to me. Sure. I need a way of, you know, marketing our products in a cost-effective way. 
Sure. You know, and that is a challenge. If you're not, if your company isn't based here and you have that branding, that brand identity tied to Las Vegas, right, how do you start it? So just being able to sit down and let's see where you're at, where you're trying to get to, navigate through all of the compliance and everything else. And then one great thing with Las Vegas we were just talking about is we love to network. Right, all of these different meetup groups. There are so many different networking groups at UNLV. Um, the the office in the building that we're at is at the Harry Reid um, Research and Tech Park, and so up on the floor, fourth floor. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's Blackfire Innovation. So we're really there to support um, to support our all industries, but the tech industry in particular. And so we actually have we host workshops and we host networking events there. Uh, for the industry, and it just gives you an opportunity um, kind of in that concentrated um, environment to be able to really network and have conversations at that level. So you're off campus, then you're at Harry Reid. Exactly, we're off campus. So it's over by, it's on Sunset, like 215 in Durango, Ikea. over by Ikea, right, right. It's pretty close from the Las Vegas Boulevard, right? Um, it's a little bit, it's further, it's west. Of, so Las Vegas Boulevard, Maryland Parkway, that's our main campus. And so we're, um, we're west over by Ikea, off of the 215 oh. over there, yeah. So the Black Fire location is, is really beautiful. At the SBDC and the Office of Economic Development, we sit on the fourth floor, so we have a panoramic view of the, of the city. It's uh, land that was donated to us, 122 acres, and uh, we're really dedicating it to outreach and technology and innovation, so beautiful. Sitting outside of my office, I have robots, so <laughs> fun thing to come to. So any other challenges? Yes, for us, I mean, we're, we, it's, it's not everything, I mean, sometimes I feel like my mind operates as partners, uh, you know, money is a big thing, but then at the same time, it's like, all right, so let's say we get an influx of money from it, and where do we properly direct it? Because sure. I feel like our product has so many customers, like we focus on an Amazon customer, a wholesale customer, a promotional customer, a dispensary, smoke shop owner, so it's like, I don't know, just... Where to put your attention is my biggest, you know. Sure. Uh, and then, you know, like as John was saying, you know, you have IP issues, you have fees coming up, you have you know, accounting, you have taxes, you have just yeah, it's a lot. lot so. It's a lot. Yeah so, everything yeah. so now, can I ask? Do you have a business plan? Um, not necessarily. Yeah. It's just, uh, we've been trying to find a partner, and then again, it's like we find a manufacturing partner. Sure. Have connections to everybody. So it's not necessarily, you don't have a proper plan to find a partner who has the connections already. Right. And you know, and those are, you know, identifying those strategies for growth are really important, right? Um, but in the same sense, people think in terms of a, you need a business plan just when you're looking for funding, uh, when you're looking for a lending partner. But oftentimes it's really that roadmap. And it's okay to have it change as your business evolves. Um, sometimes there's new revenue streams that you didn't think of before and now you have to change it a little bit. But kind of having that set in stone, really understanding what your market is, what your, what your strategies are, and then timelines, right, and your goals. So having those in place, that's something we could certainly help you with. Any others? Specific challenges? So this is what we found through, um, this is just Nevada SBDC and some of our surveys that we had taken. And so um, for existing businesses, it's venture financing, right? That's always a big thing. How do we, how do we um, fund ourselves through growth? Uh, not just at startup, but through growth. Uh, marketing strategy is a big one. Understanding taxes. It's all of those compliance things, the business things that we don't go into business for. We go into business to see our, our dreams uh, turn into reality, but we don't think in terms of, oh gosh, I didn't know there's a hefty fine associated with not being in compliance. And then, yeah, to see if your business idea is viable, feasible, profitable. Uh, we try to help kind of navigate and get some clarity in that for you. And then for startup businesses, adapting to inflation, hiring employees, that's a big one that should also be part of existing businesses. That's a whole other thing. A lot of, um, here in Las Vegas, we see a lot of companies uh, just go for straight 1099 independent contractors. 
right? But now the Department of Labor is kind of cracking down on the difference between 1099 and W-2. So how do we navigate through that? What are some of the payroll taxes? This is all the fun conversations, right? But what are the, some of the, the payroll um, taxes and tax implications tied to that? So we help you navigate through that. Finding new customers, growth, right? There's, there's the organic way of networking, um, but can we include other marketing strategies to uh, give us better and bigger visibility? So do you have an idea or project in mind? Here's how the SBDC can help you. So for starting a business, we help with new entity formation, licensing and permits, um, some market research. One of the great things with UNLV is we have access to interns that this is their field of study. And so we partner them with our clients to help. They can do a digital assessment of your, you know, your web presence. They can do actual market analysis for you. Um, grants and funding. We can help identify, you know, with grants, especially when they're federally funded, um, they change very frequently. So it's hard to keep on top of that as you're trying to build and grow your business. So we try to help with that. And then we have our own lending partners as well. Um, and so we help you prepare so that you're ready for that application process. And then with them knowing that you're part of, an S of the SBDC or you're one of our clients, they know that you're probably pretty well prepared to have those conversations. And then of course the business plans. And then growing your business, organization, because what started out, if it was you, maybe a couple of business partners, maybe somebody that was on your board of advisors or you know, maybe there for equity share, now it's changed. Now you're hiring employees, you're creating departments. What does that actually look like? Where do you put your efforts and your time? Uh, on actual marketing strategy, it could be e-commerce, but then what? You know, are you using your social media um, the social media platforms in addition to that. What if that's not, um, that's not part, that doesn't really work for your product or your service? Um, looking to hire and then developing that network. And then managing the business as we talked about, um, hiring new employees, that HR compliance piece. Once you have so many employees, now you're looking at policies and procedures. Do you have employment contracts in place? All of those things. So view us as your checklist to help you navigate through that. And then more on the, um, the actual strategy side, marketing, advertising, and sales. And then we help you with your, um, with your projections. We use a lot of our uh, finance interns as well to help you get some of those numbers together. And so what is our economic impact as the SBDC? Again, we are national. Uh, this is the Nevada SBDC 2022 annual report. As a nonprofit government agency, we are required to, um, to disclose this and to publish it publicly uh, annually. So 6,800 jobs supported, 3,200 clients counseled, 154 new business starts, and that was two years ago. A lot has changed, and I can't even tell you the explosion for 2023, so I'm really excited to see how those numbers have changed. And then we also offer workshops through the SBDC and for a lot of, um, a lot of people looking to start their business, um, you know, what are some of the things that they need to know? Yes, as one-on-one -on -one consultants for you, we can help you do that, but in the workshops they might talk about more, um, you know, getting your books set up, right? Because that's important, you gotta have that. You wanna do it earlier rather than later and have somebody come and fix it for you. So we do offer those, and then we do offer them in different languages. So we do have, um, we do have specific Spanish courses as well. Yeah. Not in French yet, but. <laughs> so how does this tie in with UNLV? And it really boils down to resources. So resources for the entrepreneur, small business owner, inventor, um, whatever you call yourself. So business advisors, we offer the one-on-one -on -one consultations. Uh, for you, whether it's starting a business, whether it's helping you plan for success, really kind of digging in and is, you know, helping you kind of muddle through all of that information. Some things are working, but we're growing, and I think we need to pivot a little bit. You know, what should that look like? Should we reset our goals? Growing and managing your business, grants and funding, the educational workshops. Now, on the UNLV Office of Economic Development side, they have a lot of different programs. So I put down student-led programs. We talked about the internship programs we have. That Those interns are actually hired by SBDC, so they partner with us. But they have something called Rebel Forge, and that's student 
their student advisors for the student entrepreneur. So really, really cool um, program that they have. And in line with that, we have kind of that next level. It's called Step Up and Start Up. And that is, that's a program um, where we have, and I'll go into more detail with it, but we basically partner our interns with you as, our, as a client. And so uh, many of those students are with the College of Engineering, so we can go into detail what that looks like. It's a really great um, resource, especially for small businesses who need some support, but they're not really in, that, in the position to hire, take on payroll, and those sort of things. Makerspace, is anyone familiar with Makerspace at all? Okay, cool. For those not, Makerspace sits on our third floor of Blackfire um, Innovation Center, and they are part of UNLV, and you can go in and create 3D prototypes of your product. Um, they can do your marketing design, your digital design. You can go in and use, uh, use the actual facility and with some training on the, um, on the equipment, they let you actually use it yourself. But you can produce all of your marketing materials. They're large format posters and banners and t-shirts um, and, and those sort of things. And as an SBDC client, you actually um, you get it really cheap. It's very inexpensive. It's like 70% discount. So we really try to, um, to have those sort of resources available to our community. So this is the UNLV Step Up and Start Up Internship Program. Um, it's designed to connect UNLV students with local startups, and it's funded entirely by the state of Nevada, the governor's office. So basically, the program benefits. So when you kind of think about how do I run my business, right? What would this actually look like for me? How will this impact me on a day-to-day -day basis? So you're offering the students basically a salary of $18. The company reimburses you within 30 days. So, the com so um, I'm sorry, UNLV reimburses the company within 30 days. So during the process, what they're going to want to make sure is that you can... Um, that you have the finances to be able to cover that payroll for that 30 days before you get the reimbursed. And you can hire your own students. Oh, did you have a question? Yeah, what is, is there a way of how to these? Uh, so um, we'll go through some of that. It's actually kind of a simple process. So you can hire your own students. Are you familiar with Handshake? So Handshake is a platform uh, where you... Um, you get approved by the different universities and colleges, and you are, it's a job board, basically, for students, uh, whether it's for internships or a lot of new grads, a lot of alumni still um, kind of want to tap into that community. I've hired off of there before, and, um, and basically you would go in and register. Uh, the, the university would approve your company, and you would post a job just like any other job board, schedule interviews, um, you know, communicate with them directly, you hire your own student, and then you submit it through, through the, you know, through the coordinator at UNLV, and we just get you set up. And this is great because students gain experience in their field of study, and then they get to build their professional network while in school. And then another, um, another benefit to that is you as the company, as the business owner, now have a pipeline for your talent, right? Um, you don't have to think, wow, I have to start over again in a year or two. You've already been training this intern. And very successfully, in every industry, they like to move those interns into, um, you, you know, into positions within their companies. It's a great opportunity both ways. Different internships offered, project engineering, computer software engineer for 3D design, um, all of these. And my understanding is we've actually extended it beyond um, engineering. So maybe in the next, um, next meetup, I'll have some additional information on that, but it's a very popular program for us. So what makes a company eligible for Step Up Startup? So you want to be able to provide a meaningful technical internship for UNLV students that are currently registered with College of Engineering. So the internship uh, must be in one of those areas. Um, provide a safe learning environment for all students, provide all materials necessary, verify student hours, and provide feedback. So this is very similar to any other internship program. So you have a, a student in place, you create, um, you create kind of a plan of success for them. 
uh, because at the end of the day, that's what you want. You don't want them to just complete tasks. You want to be able to help them be successful in that chosen career as well. And then you, um, whoever is going to manage that student, you're going to verify their student hours. You're going to provide feedback if they're accomplishing things, that sort of thing. And then it goes back and it helps, um, it helps UNLV to make sure the internship program is working, to make sure that we're matching student and companies um, well. So bring your ideas to life, makerspace. Um, so it's a resource provided by UNLV's Office of Economic Development. You can schedule time to just sit in that workspace yourself and speak to the, you know, to some of the students and the people running um, that facility. You can construct 3D prototypes, as I mentioned, produce marketing materials, and then they do have um, advisors like myself on hand. Usually, they'll do kind of um, kind of high level advising for you, and then if they feel like you need some real in depth stuff, then they'll refer you to um, one of the other advisors. And then again, discounts provided to SBDC clients. So even those that are just looking to create prototypes, we often say, sign up, register as an SBDC client. Let's just have the initial conversation and make sure that you know everything is. You've got some goals set up, and this is feasible. So you're, you know, you're really putting your time and and resources to where they should be. And then we'll get you connected with Makerspace, and then let's get some of your marketing materials or your prototype produced. Patents, trademarks, and copyrights. So um, November 2022, the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, U.S. PTO Office, designated UNLV as an actual resource center. So it's a combination of our, um, of our, li of our library, UNLV library, and then our law library, and then SWITCH is our big sponsor. And so if you, um, if you have an invention, and you are needing a patent, and you just need to do some of your you know, patent research, do a patent search, any of those things, we can help you through that process. We can help you through the application process. We don't do it for you, but we can help you navigate through that process. And then we did have at Blackfire, I want to say probably in, in October, we had a big, um, kind of a big workshop session there where the USPTO office actually came and talked about the impact of AI, right, when it comes to, um, to some of these registrations. So really great conversations that, that happen in that space as well. And then where can we meet with a business advisor? Uh, with SBDC, Harry Reid Research and Tech Park, that's where I am, as well as um, the Office of Economic Development. City of North Las Vegas, um, they have an office there that sits next to, I want to say it used to be uh, Secretary of State's office, so a lot of people go in there and actually do their registrations. Um, and then the AEPI Chamber, Henderson Chamber of Commerce, and then um, the Urban Chamber. Now the uh, Innovation Center downtown, is, are you working with them? The Innovation Center, we don't have an office there, I don't believe. Um, not the uh, not the connector, not the connector. That's part of uh, City of North Las Vegas, the Innovation Center. I don't think so. I'll have to take a look. I could be wrong. We're growing, and I know we have. We're opening one at uh, Howard Hughes. Where? Howard Hughes um, Center. Yes, yeah. so we'll be opening one there, and that'll be more of a kind of a lending center where. Um, we're trying to create centers that focus on the different areas of growth. So if they come to me first and I help with these areas and now we're looking for the lending partners, then the idea is we can then send them or have somebody from that center discuss more in depth what some of those funding options might look like. So Blackfire Innovation, that's our office and that space right there in the middle is where we have a lot of um, a lot of those workshops and a lot of networking events. It is a collaborative environment. We love to bring people in and show them, uh, show them our, ha our hospitality and casino lab. It's very cool. Um, we have companies come in and actually test out their products there, kind of use it as a showroom for the hospitality industry where they can come in and kind of see it um, what that actually looks like. And then the students come in when it's dealing with technology, some of, our, some of our robotics and some of our automated systems. They come in and they get hands-on experience. 
Um, so it's a really great um, environment for them. And again, it's 122 acres um, and just some really cool stuff happening there. You can see it looks like we have our own little casino. <laughs> and then that's the information on the SBDC if you'd like to register directly. So yeah, so do you guys have any questions at all? So we call that 800 number to contact you? Yeah, that's my direct line right there if you would just want to reach out to me. Oh, yeah, yeah, otherwise the 800 number is really, um, that's at, for the state. So if you were to just register Nevada SBDC, they would um, just distribute you to probably based on location, who an advisor, um, what, you know, um, some advisor. But if you want to reach out to me directly, or if you do register online, just put my name down and then reference Tech Alley and then they can they can send you over to me. Every advisor has a little bit different um, specialty, I guess, based on their background. And so I have a little bit of tech and then the HR consulting and then business owner. So if you feel like that you connect with that, then feel free to reach out to me. How's the uh, SBDC national network? Like, are you all pretty interconnected? If, we are. If there are companies that are multi-state, multinational, mm -hmm. like how, how are you all approaching that right. within the ecosystem? So that's a great question. So we are interconnected. We all operate a little differently, really based on our market, based on the market needs. Um, for, um, I will say if you're, if you're a national company, it's really going to be based on where you're registered, what state you're registered with. If you're multinational, right, then what does that look like? Is it going to be based on where you reside? Are they looking to have an office, an actual, presence, an actual physical presence uh, here in Nevada, and then that... We do. You do? Okay, very good. We are hosted by uh, Startup Envy. Oh, okay. Uh, Fourth Street, so like, we have an office, we just like, yeah, we just wait until we have enough traction to have our own office. And Got it. Hire more people. So did you guys set up um, an LLC here, or do you have a foreign, foreign corporation? Sorry? Did you... So yeah, so I was just kind of curious, since your um, office is overseas, yeah. did you create like a foreign, uh, registered as a foreign entity? A, a company, but it's registered in Delaware. Okay. And we just, just received a business license from Nevada, and, but we are not yet here based here. Even though you filed in Delaware, you still need your foreign entity filing here in Nevada. If you're doing, you have your business license and you're doing business in Nevada, even if you are registered with the state of Delaware as your legal entity, you still have to file here your foreign entity. Okay. Yeah, so make sure that... Um, that um, my manager is taking care of that. Okay. Yes. So it's good information, I think, we're registered in Arizona. Okay. Well, you know, it's one of those things, if you lived in California and didn't want to deal with those tax implications and you chose Delaware, Arizona, or Nevada, then that's one thing. But if you're living in Nevada, which is very business friendly, really inexpensive to be able to do your formations, then if you file in another state, you're still having to file in Nevada anyway. So you're, and then you still have to report in Nevada. So there's some of those things to think about as you're, as you're starting up. And for some companies, it doesn't matter. You know, they want to have uh, the benefits from that specific state, but just to be aware that if you're in Nevada, you still have to comply with Nevada, so. Where can we get those that uh, Secretary of State, Secretary yeah. So where they, um, so I'm not sure if they just did the business license, the local license, but you'll still have to do Secretary of State. That's right, because nobody said that to me before. And yeah. Like we came in January last year, we met with Black Tire, we met with a lot of like, oh. uh, Right. Nobody say that we need it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to get out. Yeah, so you still need to so do how, that. How would, you know, I'm interested in signing up, just we sign up online or do we, do we go to one of those? Yeah, no, you can just sign up right there, nevadasbdc.org, and then it'll just ask you for, it'll be confidential information, and that way we are, we are all, you know, um, yeah. NDAs and everything else. Right, yeah. I feel like it's just, this is just the guy that we've been kind of looking Very interested to check out Blackfire. Yeah, yeah, Blackfire, and then feel free to just reference me in Tech Alley, and that way it helps us know how people find us, how they found us. Um, and you know, and, and that's kind of the thing is sometimes you have a product or a service or an invention, and it moves quickly, 
right? You're able to make the connections, you're able to generate some revenue, but are you covered in all those other aspects? So let's go back to the basics and make sure that we cover all of those gaps. And then usually from that, people are like, wow, you know, now, now I get to question my marketing strategy. Is it still appropriate at this stage of, of growth for my company? And so those are, those are kind of our goals to help and support you um, as entrepreneurs and business owners. Yeah. Now, if I have a question about physics or chemistry, just the one question, in other words, a certain spring or temperature, is there some place I can call at UNLV that a professor could answer in three minutes? I'm not asking for, you know, an hour yeah. of time, just yes this or look this up or go here. Is there any sort of service like that? You know, that's that's a tough one because we do get a lot of people that come in that, that want help with just a specific thing. And so I don't think we really have the capacity uh, to be able to do that and manage all of them. So we have a lot of, like we have inventors that come in that set up as a client, as a business client, and that way we can help navigate through everything. Is it just a, a little widget thing that you need? So that we would pay that professor out of our pocket? Um, you know, if you were a client of the SBDC and we referred you um, through whether it's just, you know, so it really depends. So is it just a question on that one particular thing or is it something where you can now be part of like this uh, like a business engagement thing which yeah, is I really kind of our goal the difference yeah the answer to a, the quick question might say well that's a dumb idea give up that idea or hey that idea might work i want to go forward right so that's the other now when okay so let's say i lock out like i come up with a zippy do mm -hmm. What percentage does the college want from that? That's a great question. That's something that we're working on right now um, in being able to partner with you know, companies and inventors like yourself. So there is no um, actual amount. We're actually just kind of going through um, you know, equity share. What does that look like? Is it a piece of... So we are still kind of navigating what that looks like. So the UNLV... Um, we have our own, we have our own grant money. We have our own foundation, and so we are looking to partner with those in the industry um, that are dealing with new innovation, coming up with new ideas. But we're not quite there yet. So bear with us a little bit, and um, I'll gather that information and, and hopefully present so it next time. A, let's say an individual is a student at UNLV, right? And they and they come up with an idea, and if they use this the university resources to develop the idea, does the university want a piece of it? I know they do it with the instructors. Yeah. It, it basically, it's like if you are working for Coca-Cola and you're working on their product, on their, um, it's the property, is, it's owned by Coca-Cola. So we're kind of navigating through that now, but, um, but I think all, if not a large percentage of that would be owned by UNLV if it's student, if it's a student invention. So yeah, I think. Student, now let's say we're a resident of the community. Right. And then you come to Black Fire, whatever it is. Right. And you take it then. Are we considered then a student or are we still considered an outside? You're, you're considered a client. You're considered outside business, um, separate business. These would be actual UNLV students. So that's the decision you need to make. What If I come in as a client, Exactly. How make it fair for you and exactly. Have you, have you be interested? In that? Absolutely, absolutely. So for the students, we have an area called tech transfer, and so that's kind of a a newer initiative for us as well. So we're really trying to get together and kind of asking ourselves how can we best support all of this new innovation that's happening in Las Vegas. So yeah, so if you were to come in as a client, we kind of laid the groundwork, this is what he's doing, this is what he needs, he has specific questions in these areas. It's something that's going to eventually um, you know, benefit our community, benefit the greater good. These are things that, that we would love to be able to invest in, right? And to be able to, um, to pro provide grant money, some funding towards. Um, so then we would partner you with that department and then they would kind of take a look at it and say, 
you know, what makes sense? Does it feel, fit into our portfolio, where we want to go, our goals, those sort of things? And, and then talk about after that, what would that percentage look like? Right. So it would have to be kind of this, this ongoing conversation to see what makes sense on both sides. You know, and I, as, a, as, a, as an advisor, I run into a lot of clients who are in the tech industry. And they're like, Rachel, I want funding, I want resources, but I'm not willing to give anything up. And I get that. But let's continue the conversations then and see what your timeline, what your goals really are. Are they reasonable? And then what do we need to do? Especially if you're running out of your own cash, right? And a lot of startups are using their own cash versus let's create a plan and maybe let's create some business credit, business history for you so that you can use somebody else's money instead of your own. So there, you know, that's an ongoing conversation. I think there are opportunities there. I would say let's, let's partner and kind of um, and lay that groundwork so we can present it to our team and then have them take it from there. Yeah. Oh, good, 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 thank you. Any other questions, specific questions? Are you all um, kind of startup? Startup? How many employees do you have? Okay. Okay. Sure. And uh, I'm doing the but it's, it's tougher than expected, to be honest. Sure. Uh, I think that in England, and I've prepared uh, to get into that market, we mm -hmm. didn't make enough uh, market research. I've been hired by the company, and they just sent me here. Right, right. And, and I didn't knew that nothing was done. Right. <laughs> and that happens, that happens a lot, yeah. right? It's all of a sudden you're generating revenue, you've got some brand identity, people are looking you up, and it's like, oh my gosh, somebody go and, and help, you know, cover yeah. that part of... Uh That's a beauty. That's a beauty of technology nowadays, right? You can operate lean and still grow big, yeah. and so and so for here in in um, in Las Vegas in particular. So you're with Startup Nevada, Start, yeah, yeah. Startup Envy. Um, so I mean, talk to them. There's as agencies, we're okay with like if you want to consult with other organizations. Yeah, I mean, at the beginning we were trying to get to Black Tie Innovation Okay. Sure, and then you want to make sure that you're aligning yourself right as you're networking and, and trying to figure out who your community partners can be, that you're aligning it based on your... I was thinking about my setup because my visa hand up in September and I'm trying to stay here. Oh, so sure, I'm sure. For, uh, for my, uh, future fund can I, do you mind if I ask what industry, what business? Okay. Okay, good. That's just an idea for now. Sure. <laughs> no, that's okay. So we actually have an event. Um, we have a number of events coming up, but I want to say we have a big ne networking event, February twenty first. Um, February twenty first at Blackfire, and that's going to be. Um, small business owners, it could be technology, it could be other industries. Um, and then we have another one that we're trying to coordinate right now with one of the big, um, one of the big lenders in town um, that specialize in small business lending. So kind of give you access, let you have conversations to see what do I need to qualify, what sort of programs are available to me. 
you know, do I need to be, and I will say that there are, I just met with, um, with one a couple of days ago and they were saying there's a new program for small businesses, new businesses for under $50,000 and you don't have to go through the whole creating a business plan, you don't need the full um, business credit history and all of those things. So they're trying to be um, a little bit more flexible with um, hopefully interest rates coming down a few times end of this year. They're trying to spark lending and, and borrowing and making it a friendlier environment. What website do we go to to see what events are happening at Black You know, I don't know if we have it there, but if you reach out to me directly, I can, I can get that for you. Yeah, what's the cadence of those events? Is it pretty random? Is, you know, is it weekly? You know, it's um, the event space we also rent, to, rent out to the community, so sometimes it's, yeah, I think it was like SHRM, the Society for HR Management. I think they rented it out one time. USPTO, but that was in collaboration with us and our uh, patent and trademark um, office. Um, but it can be random, but we're trying to, it's not, so my office is actually right there at that center, and so it's not used as much as we'd like for it to be used. So we're really trying to see how we can be more visible in the community, let them know about Blackfire, how can we help host you help give you better access to the rest of the community? How can we bring more resources, more information to help you succeed? And that's really our goal. So we, it is kind of random, um, but there's a lot of available time and space built in there too. So um, if you had any ideas, if you're well networked, if there's, you know, even here with like Tech Alley, gosh, if we could, if we could combine and do something with them and host an event there, that would be really cool you know, and really bring technology and innovation into Blackfire. So. You guys have uh, open, open days, or if I, if I wanted to just come by and do a tour? Yeah, you know what, schedule time with me, and then I'll, I'll give you a tour. Okay. Yeah, super easy, we love to show it off. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's, it's really cool, I mean, there's just, you know, new technology, new equipment, we've got, um, Companies that come in and they test out their their video games and you know we've got like stadium seating and people go and they it's just a really cool environment so okay. so make sure to check that out so I'll stick around if you have any specific questions um, if you want one on one confidential time please just schedule some time with me okay perfect yes absolutely enjoy the rest of your day.